me about the psychological aspect of being a double agent. How, that can't have been easy. How did that affect you mentally? Well, that's a good question. I think um, in the world of espionage, when they do all the tests to select you to, do, to be a, a, an undercover agent, you have to have the capacity to do that. Um, you know, agents all over the world live like that. You have to like, live a double life. Um, and you have to be able to slip in between these parallel existences because that is what agents do. Being a double agent in some ways isn't that much different because you still, you're just pretending the other way if you like. So um, it does, I don't think it's, you, that someone like that has to have psychological s problems because otherwise they wouldn't select you. You, you wouldn't be able to, to deal with it. Of course, it doesn't mean that underneath all of the, the work and the layers and the, and the double roles, it doesn't mean you don't have a conscience and feelings, mm -hmm. but you'd have to keep them really locked up. And so for very many years, I couldn't speak to anybody about what I really felt. Uh, I couldn't tell, there was no one to tell. Who would I tell? Um, and so when I could tell someone, Strachan in Harare, it was a huge relief, huge. Have you recounted the story? I imagine you have. Have you told the story to your kids? Well, um, over the years, th because when they're little it's harder for them to understand, but I've never made a secret of it. And, you know, as they've asked and, and as time has gone on, I have told them parts of the story here and there, but never the whole thing. You know, it's a long and complicated story. And so it's quite good that it's come out now when they're mm. in their early 20s. Um, they can understand yeah. um, and they've been amazingly supportive. They, they're actually really proud of me for doing it. I can imagine they are. <laughs> what, what do you, how does it make you feel to know that some people still don't believe your story? Well, you know, that's up to them. Mm. Um, I think if you, if you look at all the, um, the, the other stories that go behind the background and other people's stories, mm. Uh, you, 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 my story is corroborated by other um, accounts uh, and if you think about it th there isn't really another explanation for what happened um, other than my own decisions to do things at certain times th there is no other, th that's the reality and if people don't want to believe it well that's, that's really up to them now I have two tweets that I want to read to you and then okay. have you uh, respond. Uh, yes. Megan Furness wrote on Twitter, um, it's so interesting Olivia Forsyth has the tone of a victim and not a spy. What would you say to that if you had, if someone had said that to you in person? That yeah, well, I, d well, I don't know where she sees that tone mm -hmm. because I think I've always taken full responsibility for what I've done. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I've always been quite upfront. I could have made different decisions at any point. It's wonderful to be wise with hindsight. Mm. But I, I've, I don't think I've ever presented myself as a victim. I've, you know, even the stories about Quattro, I feel really lucky that I didn't get particularly punished or I was never sent to solitary. Um, I think it was unfortunate, um, but I, I, I don't think I have presented myself as a victim. Do you still think about those women who, who you spent time with in Quattro? I do, you know. I would love to know their stories. If I, in, 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 in another capacity, I would love to find them and, and write their stories. But I'm not sure they'd all want to. I'm sure they've moved yeah. on with their lives now. But they were a fascinating group of women who were, you know, when you're stuck in a, a small cell and there are five, six of you, you, you have a camaraderie that just develops in that situation. And they were wonderful to me. So I, I hope their lives have turned out well and that they have found happiness. And the last tweet I'm going to read here. So, okay, Tembi Kile wrote, Olivia Forsyth was a spy for the apartheid government and expects us to believe none of the people she spied on were killed. Now this has been something that people have been talking about um, recently. Do you know if any of the information you provided led to any kind of violence? Well, I'm <clears throat> well, any kind of violence is a broad brush, mm. but, but, you know, I was reporting mainly on students, but, uh, you know, we also, I was also in close contact with some COSAS activists, um, with people from the Grahamstown Youth Congress, uh, 
and obviously I would have had to report all of my activities to the security branch. When I was there, um, nobody that I was in contact with had any particular harm come to them, except um, Chris Mbekele, because his house was petrol bombed um, one night, and I was called by um, a, a, a wonderful woman called Priscilla Hall, phoned me to tell me that his house had been petrol bombed and his girlfriend, Mizeka, had been really bur badly burnt. Um, and that was a terrible thing. I mean, I, I couldn't have known who was responsible, but everybody knew that police and the army were doing it because they were up and down in, in armed, uh, armored cars in the townships. And they were, the petrol, the petrol bombing was helped by um, people who were from the townships but had turned is in Pimpi and they used to put balaclavas on and they used to go up and down and point out activists' houses. Now, I wouldn't have been able to do that because I didn't actually know where the house was. Um, but, um, so, so I wasn't responsible for that. I, I was lucky that I was in a position to help uh, on, that, on that horrific evening. Um, but to my knowledge, no one was ever killed, um, disappeared, or anything like that as a result of information that I gave. Um, you know, if someone wants to come and show me differently, fine. You know, I accept that information that I gave could have been used. Um, what I do know is that, you know, I, uh, as far as student activities went, no, you know, um, nothing like that. And uh, even the township activists that I knew at that time, when I was there, uh, it, it did not have any horrific ends like that. Um, but it doesn't mean I, 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 you know, I don't feel responsible. Um, you know, that I, you know, I was part of that system. And, and, and the system did some horrific things, you know, that is true. But I, what I can say is I tried to do the right thing by, by going over to the ANC. I thought that was the way to make a contribution. Do you hope that this book can, can close and put an end to that part of your life? For me it does, you know, um, and I, if people do take the trouble to read it and, you know, um, at least consider what I have to say, that would be great. Um, I think it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a complicated story and um, I, I am flattered that people like John Robbie have said they couldn't put it down. Mm -hmm. um, that means at least I've written it reasonably well and, and you know, it's there. If people would like to read it, it would be, it would be great. Olivia, thank you very much for coming in and sharing. Thank you for having me, Jim.